Hi, I'm Ben Hanawal, Product Specialist here at Atlas Copco, and today we're going to be talking about the Power Focus 6000. Let's take a look down in the software. Today we're going to be talking about batch sequences on the Power Focus 6000. So if we look at the home screen and we follow along, we can see at the top row in the middle we have an option for batch sequence. So what we're going to do is we're going to click into here and see what we have going on. So a couple things to note on this main screen. First things first, at the top right corner you see a plus button. This is for adding an additional batch sequence. So if you want to have you know, 10 or 20 or 30, you go up here and you can actually add them with this plus button. We also have our sequence library overall, and then we can search batch sequences alphabetically if that's something that you're interested in. Or you can use the search bar located right here. Either option will work. So for this example, I only have one in here, right? I've only got one batch sequence located in this controller right now. So if I come in here, let's go through the settings and what all is in here. A batch sequence is essentially a group of tightening programs running to a specific batch size. Okay, So on previous generations of controllers, this was known as a job. They renamed it to batch sequence to keep the nomenclature between the fixtured and the handheld systems common between the two of them. So up top we have our name. This can be up to 32 characters. Typically I like to name it whatever job it's doing. So maybe we say like airbag two rundown, something like that. If we go into our settings, we have a couple options in here. We have lock tool on batch sequence complete. I always leave that on. And the reason I leave that on is because if you have it off, when you finish your batch sequence, it's automatically gonna restart it and go back into it. So typically, you do not want to leave that off. It is an option though. Free order. So what this would be used for is if you have a socket tray and you want to be able to select the order of the rundowns in any order based on the socket tray, you can turn this to yes. So that's the only situation you would ever turn on the free order is if you're using it with a socket tray and uh, you want to be able to select them in any order. The next one down we have increment on not okay. This setting would be used for if we want to increment the batch sequence on a not okay rundown. We also right below it have the ability to set a max consecutive not okays. Keep in mind on the Power Focus 6000, if you ever set any of these settings to zero, it will essentially ignore that setting. We also have an option for decrementing on an okay loosening. So this would mean that if we have two out of three okays and you see an okay loosening, it'll actually decrement it down. And then the last one we have is going to be our sequence abort timer. If I turn this on, you'll see we can set an abort time. Basically what this would be is if you start a batch sequence and you don't finish it in a certain amount of time, we have the ability to abort the sequence and they'll have to reinitiate and restart their batch sequence. And then finally at the very bottom, you see that we have our batch configuration. And this is really where we're going to assign our tightening programs that are going to be used. So if I go into edit, you can see I actually already have two programs in here. But what you'll notice is we have our tightening program and then we have our batch size associated. Now, I can change which tightening program we want to use. So keep in mind a batch sequence, if it's not set to free order, it's going to follow straight in this order. So if I was to add another, you can see it's going to follow this order. So that would be the order that we need to follow our rundowns in. So for this example, we have our tightening programs over on the left side. We also have our batch size. So that's how many rundowns before we advance on to the next stage of the fastening or the batch sequence. Over on the right, we have something called identifier number. Now, identifier number is used for socket trays. I mentioned this earlier. So if you are using a socket tray, you can select this and set the socket number to be used for each of these. So keep that in mind. But if I am not using a socket tray, I'm gonna to wanna to leave these set to none because otherwise it'll give me an error that says wrong socket selected because it's looking for a socket tray. So this is my batch sequence. That's all the settings that we have. So what I wanna show you now is how this is gonna behave in a production environment. So if I go back to my home screen and I go to my virtual station tab, what you'll see is I have my tool assigned and my task, if I go down to my task tab and hit change task, I have a batch sequence option. So if I go in here, you're going to see there's my batch sequence we just created, the airbag two rundowns. 
So I can click on it and now what you'll see is if I go to my results screen, you'll notice that I'm actually running my batch sequence. And you have up here, this is going to be how many different tightening programs are running. So as you remember from my sequence, I had four total tightening programs, and then this is gonna be the batch size for the selected tightening program. So if I start doing rundowns, what you'll see is we start to get traces and it's gonna be advancing on through. So you can see it just changed tightening programs to rotate 720, and we can advance on through. This one requires three rundowns. Now the last two should only just be a batch size of one each, and you can see that right here. So I can do my rundown on each one, and what you'll see now is it's solid green on top, solid green on the bottom. And if I pull the trigger, you're going to notice that we get an error that says tool lock due to batch sequence complete. So that is all you need to know about batch sequences and what they are. We're going to create other videos on how to select those with a field bus and things like that. That would actually be in the sources tab. But I hope that this information has been valuable to you. If you do have any additional questions, please feel free to contact your Atlas Copco marketing team and we can try and get you some answers. <music>